steel deck welding. Topic number 10, steel deck welding. We will look at connection patterns, seam attachments, tunnel welds, and welded headed studs, also known as Nelson studs. Continuing with topic number 10, steel deck welding. Deck welding operation is captured in this slide. Before we go into welding issues, DSA would like to remind you and CWI to watch where you stand when the deck is not completely welded down to the supporting structure. Walking onto cantilever deck area when it's not welded down may result in DSA signing another Form 5 PI. The CWI must ensure that the electrodes are properly stored, the welder places the correct size and pattern of welds, and no burn through occurs. Continuing with topic number 10, steel deck welding. This slide presents a typical metal deck welding pattern. The CWI needs to make sure the welder provides the correct number, size, and pattern. The PI should also walk the deck for personal knowledge and to verify the ability of the CWI in providing the required inspection. Continuing with topic number 10, steel deck welding. In lieu of top seam weld, button punch may be used to attach deck panels together. This slide shows a picture of good button punch for deck seam attachment with indentation on the left and protrusion on the right of the seam. Continuing with topic number 10, steel deck welding. Well, the top seam is used to attach deck panels together as illustrated in this slide. Continuing with topic number 10, steel deck welding. This slide shows welding operation for welded headed studs or Nelson studs. Separate puddle welds other than temporarily used to secure deck to the supporting structure are not required when headed studs are used on the deck. Continuing with topic number 10, steel deck welding. Typical stud attachment detail is shown on this slide. Note the various dimensional requirements needed to properly install welded studs. Continuing with topic number 10, steel deck welding. This slide presents a typical detail showing the distribution of welded studs along the length of the girder. The function of the studs is to connect the steel member and concrete deck together to allow composite action to take place. This means that under load, the steel member will be in tension while concrete will be in compression. This is similar to how concrete girder will work with rebars in tension and concrete in compression. The composite action must be fully developed before maximum flexural demand occurs along the length of the girder. Again, this is similar to rebar development in a concrete girder. Since this girder appears to support beams at one-third span, the maximum moment occurs in the middle third of the girder. This is the reason for having most of the studs placed on the outer or end third of the span. Continuing with topic number 10, steel deck welding. Improperly placed deck and the resulting ineffective welder studs for composite action is shown in this slide. Recall the requirements shown on the previous two slides. The deck placement must be adjusted to allow low flue to center on the girder and the studs to have proper concrete cover and spacing. Continuing with topic number 10, steel deck welding. This slide presents a closer look at the improperly placed deck and welded studs. PI should discuss deck placement with all parties to avoid this rather unnecessary rework. A DSA 154 notice of deviation may need to be issued 
when this occurs. Continuing with topic number 10, steel deck welding. This slide shows conduits placed immediately adjacent to welded studs on a beam. The proximity of conduits to the studs may reduce the capacity of the composite beam. Additionally, fire resistance rating may be affected. Since conduits are typically shown on single line diagrams, it is unlikely that the structural engineer of record is aware of this issue. Project inspector need to discuss such placement with the architect of record for fire light safety issue and the structural engineer of record for structural safety issue. PI should also advise district structural engineer on this situation after notifying the AE team. Continuing with topic number 10, steel deck welding. This slide shows one type of casting place insert for possibly MEP hanger below the deck. Casting place hangers must be secure in place, have valid ICC ESR or equivalent report where appropriate, and coordinated with MEP elements being supported below to avoid the need for expansion anchors. All parties should be encouraged to use inserts as shown on the approved drawings to expedite construction. CCD is required if approved inserts are being substituted. Concrete shall not be placed until the CCD is approved. Continuing with topic number 10, steel deck welding. Project inspectors should be on the lookout for skilled deck attachment when framing members are not perpendicular to each other. The skilled deck may result in deck welds not meeting the required number and pattern per approved drawings. Therefore, the deck may not have the capacity as a diaphragm and may not be able to resist uplift at the roof. Please engage the SEOR to review the situation.